Hello, welcome back to Taming Toxic Plants, uh, part of the University of Wyoming Extension. My name is Derek Scasta. Today I'm going to talk about a unique situation in horses where two weedy plants um, called yellow star thistle and Russian knapweed, both of which are in the same genus Centauria, can have a very negative effect on the brains um, and ability of horses to eat. Now in Wyoming, both of these plants are weedy species that are exotic and are known to be toxic to horses. And this is the case in many other states in the United States as well. There's no information on if they are toxic to cattle or sheep or even wildlife. Now in Wyoming, um, both are designated as noxious weeds, which brings additional um, regulations and obligations to manage these species. Now, these are two species that are not highly desirable for grazing, and generally they're only grazed after the other forage is gone. And so this is a largely a grazing management issue, as well as a plant invasion issue. Now, there's also some cases that have um, come up in Australia, and I'll share some of that information as well. So let's start with yellow star thistle. Um, in the top, you can see a small seedling, and you can see the unique deeply lobed um, new leaves of that plant. This plant is a tap-rooted annual with yellow solitary flowers that you can see in the bottom left. And just below these flowers, we have these spines up to one inch in length that protrude, which is a really unique um, feature of this plant, part of the reason it's called yellow star thistle. Now, the stems of yellow star thistle also have this winged appendage, which is a really unique identifying feature as well. Now, here we can see a map that shows some known locations of yellow star thistle in Wyoming. This includes Hot Springs and Washakie counties up in the Bighorn Basin. Um, there's also known um, occurrences in Gallatin County up in Montana and then northeastern Utah, like in the Cache um, Valley area. Now, this is the USDA plant database map. Again, you can see Hot Springs County shows as having this plant species. Um, interestingly, Platt County shows as well. But then you can see throughout Western Idaho, parts of Oregon and Washington, and also parts of um, Northern Nevada and California are known to be places where yellow star thistle has invaded. So this comes from the Wyoming State Weed and Pest, and you can just see these overall trends um, in 2003 and then 2013. And I just want to point out that there's also been some efforts in Teton County, Sweetwater County, and Converse County um, to manage this problematic species. Now here we have Russian knapweed. Um, this is a little bit different than yellow star thistle because it is a perennial. It's known as a creeping forb and it has these solitary pink to purple flowers. So pretty distinctly different than yellow star thistle even though they occur in the same genus. Now this is the USDA distribution map and it's important to note that every county in Wyoming um, is thought to have this plant in it as does every county in Montana. Most of the counties in Idaho in Oregon and much of Washington, Nevada, and California, and then into the Southwest, um, Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and Colorado. And then there's some areas up in North Dakota and even in East and Central Kansas that are known um, to have Russian knapweed. A common name for this also, interestingly, is hardheads. Now, the toxin in these two plants is a neurotoxic sesquiterpenoid known as repin. And it causes an immobility of the facial musculature. And this disorder is known as chewing disease. More technically, nigropolidal encephalomalacia. Now, it affects the 5th, 7th, and 12th cranial nerves, um, primarily through the development of lesions in the brain. Now, Chang et al. 2012 published this paper where they likened this disorder to human Parkinson's disease, and essentially it's an environmentally acquired um, toxic Parkinsonism, if you will. Now, this diagram just shows where these lesions are located. In the next slide, I'll show you some actual images of lesions. If we were to take a side profile of a horse's brain and on these two um, red lines, we were to take cross sections and then spin those so we face them from the front, um, that would give us these two images on the right. Now the top would be the globus pilitis region of the brain and these red dots would be where lesions occur. And then in the bottom would be the substantia nigra. And again, you can see 
two red dots where this bilateral symmetrical presentation of lesions happens. Now here in this paper by Elliot and McCowan, you can see actual images of these lesions. Now in the top picture in panel A, you can see the substantia nigra region, and then in the bottom, the globus pilitis region. Now, in terms of signs and symptoms, um, this is a chronic issue that takes many weeks to possibly months of exposure to large amounts of this plant material. And chewing disease is this manifestation um, often found to be more common in younger animals. This includes twitching of the lips, tongue flicking, involuntary chewing motion, drowsiness, and then ultimately weight loss and emaciation. Now, this not only affects eating, but also drinking. Both are impaired, um, but ultimately swallowing or the throat is not um, affected. Now, the mouth is sometimes held partly open and the tongue may be partially protruding. And then this bilateral necrosis of the brain is um, thought to be irreversible. And ultimately, these horses die from starvation. Now, this table here just shows um, a, a cohort of horses that have had this disorder. Um, importantly, all of these were older than 12 months um, and included both male and female horses. And these came from Colorado, California, and Michigan, just to kind of show you the uh, demographics of horses that might be affected. And, and you can also see breed in here, anything from quarter horses to Mustangs to Arabian horses, miniature horses, and even, um, well, the Appaloosa there was a control. Um, when they were doing some examination. Now, this Centauria problem is an invasion problem. First, that species can invade rangelands, pasture lands, and disturbed areas, and it's only problematic in horses, but then it becomes a grazing problem. Um, this includes the idea that if horses graze these plants prior to flowering, they might be more susceptible to this manifestation of chewing disease, and ultimately this is a chronic problem that is untreatable. Now here are the dosages for yellow star thistle. It's going to take anywhere from four to five weeks, 28 to 35 days of ingestion. And those horses would have to consume 86% to 200% of their total body weight. For Russian knapweed, it seems to take uh, a bit longer, anywhere from 33 to 88 days of ingestion, but the same total amount of body weight, 86% um, to 200% of the horse's body weight. Now, in terms of diagnosis, we would first look for presence of these plants in the pastures or the hay, and then the clinical symptoms of chewing. Ultimately, we would want to remove these animals from the pastures. However, and unfortunately, there's no known treatment. And in many cases in the, the clinical literature, um, horses have had to be euthanized due to this hopeless prognosis um, of this chewing disease disorder. So a really interesting problem. Um, that can occur if we have invasion of these noxious weeds and horses ingest a large amount of material over a long period of time. Now, here's some more resources for you that you want to make sure and check out. And my email is there at the bottom. And then always, if you have a poisoning situation, consult the appropriate veterinary or medical professionals. Now, stay tuned. We have a lot more material coming in this Taming Toxic Plants series.